We know people are depraved enough to try to get straight guys to suck them. We've all heard of it. Uh, the P. Diddy quote is my, it's a uh, Jaguar Wright said this, an ex-employee of him. He goes, if you can get a man to suck you, you can do anything. All of these uh, big dick deviants is all catching hell in 2024. It's up for all of them. It don't matter if you Diddy or whoever you is. T.G. Jakes, any of them. The, all, every, all lies will be exposed. That's all. And, and, and anyone who takes that the wrong way know why they take it the wrong way. The truth is the light. I need to have no more of these. Amen, amen. What's going on, Jamie? I don't know. It's, there's a lot going on. A lot of rumors are flying. The rumors are that Diddy was running some kind of Epstein-type deal where he was filming everybody, right? That's the rumors. Yeah, I don't know that there's any proof for anything. Dude, when Homeland Security invades your house. You got problems. With dudes, with guns, and... I think it's over. You think it's over? I think it's over for him as like a, uh, a figure in entertainment. Right. But do you like, think it's over as him as far as jail? Like, he gets a cell right next to R. Kelly? When the feds rolled up, you know, with the f***ing Hummers and shit, they are like, it wasn't about Diddy. It was about if there were tapes of powerful people there. Yeah. Someone said that they weren't there to take stuff. They were there to delete everything. Like the real people that were in there, you know. Oh, like that's funny. With Epstein. Oh, that's funny. Who gonna turn down 50 million? Now, I've had to turn down $50 million four times. Four times, just to protect my integrity and that virgin hole I was telling you about. <laughs> right, because uh, P. Diddy be wanting the body. And you got to tell him no. Problem. You got to tell him no. I, I did. I did. See, I got the receipts for everything I'm telling you. Two comedy legends, Cat Williams and Joe Rogan, teaming up to spill some major tea? Yeah, you heard that right. Today they're pulling back the curtain on Hollywood's darker side, where rumors fly about rappers and other celebs paying Diddy to wipe out scandalous freak-off tapes. Just what secrets are hiding in the vaults? And why is Diddy the go-to fixer for A-list reputations? Stay tuned, because this one's about to get wild. The internet thinks that the Taliban took out that bridge in Baltimore, so it's like, who f***ing knows? Who knows what's real? That's what Diddy's lawyers, I think, said. It was like, yeah, these are just... You think it's over? I think it's over for him as like a uh, a figure in entertainment. Right. But do you like, think it's over as him as far as jail? Like, he gets a cell right next to R. Kelly? I don't think so. Diddy, it was about if there were tapes of powerful people there. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. They were the ones that called. They're like, I need to protect myself, so go in there with all the things and rip any tapes or any evidence. Well, Prince Harry was hanging with Diddy. I mean, everybody hung with Diddy. That's the other tricky yeah. thing. Like, you recorded that? Check this out. I know I'm black, but Saturday, I'm coming to the party, yo. I'm it's in the Diddy that hung out with dead. everybody, and I've spoken to a bunch of people who are like, yo, great dude, like, always there for you, never asked for a single thing. Till one in the morning. And then, then the freak off. Everybody the says, get out of the house. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like the gremlins start eating after <laughs> yeah, midnight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't want to look at nothing I don't want to have. Because I, I know how blessed I am. If I look at it, I got it. That's how Diddy be feeling. Now, come on, man. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Word is spreading that Joe Rogan and Cat Williams might have the inside scoop. They're usually in the loop on this kind of thing, right? The buzz is that Joe and Cat have revealed a list of high-profile names allegedly caught on Diddy's tapes. And guess what? I've got that list right here. So let's get ready as we go through each name, from major players like Stevie J and Chris Brown to Oprah and beyond. Let's explore how these stars found themselves on Diddy's tapes and what they might have been up to. If what I say ain't the case, it's a cabal, it's a, it's a consortium. They, they rock with who they rock with and they don't with who they don't. But I'm not scared of being the competition any more than you were when you lined up uh, uh, across from a superior team. Yeah, on paper, they're a better team. Everybody they probably knew. all knew. This was like an open secret, the Diddy Party thing. Mm -hmm. the, the, the it's almost like the Cosby Williams talked thing. about it on his podcast. He literally called them freak offs. He mm -hmm. has pulled his lawsuit in the wake of the okay. allegations levied against him. Okay. Oh, so he didn't win. First up is Stevie J. Stevie is a major figure in the music scene, 
and played a key role on Diddy's debut album back in 97. With nearly 30 years in the business, he's worked closely with Diddy at Bad Boy. Recently, he was hanging out at Diddy's Miami place when, out of nowhere, Homeland Security arrived. Stevie described the scene as chaotic, like a war zone, with helicopters in the sky and agents in armor everywhere. He even mentioned having laser dots aimed at him. Pretty intense stuff. He knew that this kid admired Stevie J and loved the work Stevie J had done in the industry in the past. This kid looked up to Stevie J. Now, what if Puff told him that that was Stevie J in the tape? And the kid, the guy looked like Stevie J. He did facial, uh, they, his face, he did facial, his face was fixed like he was doing some of the faces Stevie J be making. Here's the twist. Stevie J being at Diddy's place during the raid isn't what's landing him on Rogan's rumored list. There's more to it. Recently, music producer Rodney Jones Jr. filed a lawsuit against Diddy, alleging that Diddy made advances towards him while they were working together. Jones claims Diddy tried to lure him into bed, boasting about his high-profile hookups in hip-hop, but Jones wasn't interested. I don't know what my, whatever someone does in their bedroom, that's what they do. I don't got nothing to do with that. I'm just here to say that I've never seen my man doing anything foul like they talking about. None of it. All of it, I, I mean, I you know. I, I've never seen it. I've known him for 29 years. And then it's like with guys like like 50, you know what I'm saying? Like Uncle Tom cats like that. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you now you want to put me, I don't know if y'all saw the post when 50 posted about me, of course you guys. He was doing some of the faces Stevie J be making, you understand? So now the kid could have been drunk, kid could have been high. He was like, yo, Puff could have been like, yo, you talking about this is somebody you admire. Look what he doing. This Stevie J right here. Now, in that kid mind, he may have thought that was Stevie J or he think that's Stevie J. If Puff told him that was Stevie J, it was Stevie J. So people can't say, oh, he lying and everything like that. What's interesting is that Diddy specifically mentioned Stevie J's name while hinting at others. Why single him out? Fans think Diddy might have some intimate footage of Stevie J. Jones also suggested that Diddy had a scheme to control celebrities using freaky tapes, hinting Stevie J might even be involved in helping Diddy get people to his infamous parties. But Stevie J denies it all, defending Diddy publicly and even challenging doubters online, including 50 Cent. 50 posted about me, of course you guys. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, I mean, 50 um, has been going after Diddy and everybody associated with him for months now, ever since the Cassie lawsuit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, you can't brush under the rug. I, I don't see anybody um, um, reporting about what um, Tatted Up Holly said about him beating her up and about, you know what I'm saying, his other baby mom saying beating her up. I just look at it as, you know, he wants to bring the black community down worse than anyone else. How? How is that so? I said what I said on my post and I'm standing on that too. Now, since he didn't accept what my offer to him and he want to continue to be a comedian, why don't you go make some movies with Michael Blackson and don't talk about him? And that, when I say people respond, how people respond to things matter, like the, the internet will take to it and just go off with it. To me, responds being uh, the uncomfortability. He goes, yo, nah, I gotta spend 100,000 to find out why my name is in this like this. And it's in it only because he's uncomfortable. Meanwhile, Philadelphia rapper Meek Mill is also rumored to be connected to Diddy. Rodney Jones hinted that Diddy claimed to have had a fling with someone from Philly, sparking rumors about Meek Mill. Though Meek wasn't mentioned in the lawsuit, fans picked up the clues. Meek Mill chilling out the auto Diddy allegations. They had a recording of Meek and Diddy making love. I don't know if it was love. Got okay, it. you have it? Let's hear it. What? Yo, wait a minute. Wait, ah! You didn't hear this? No! 
Now, Mir Miran, Wait, yeah. what, does that sound authentic? Given Diddy's reputation for recording his private encounters, there's speculation that he might have recorded interactions with Meek, too. Meek quickly shut down these rumors on social media, tweeting that he doesn't get involved in any questionable behavior and that no one would dare approach him with anything inappropriate. Despite Meek's denial, fans dug up an old video of Diddy with Meek in a pool, where Diddy expresses affection for him. Man, you doing it, man. You deserve it, daddy. You putting in that work. Proud of you. I love you. Yeah. This video only fueled more rumors, with fans speculating that if Diddy would post casual pool footage with Meek, there might be other recordings kept behind the scenes. Some believe Diddy might have been using such footage as leverage over Meek. Dr. Dre, he said Eminem is the best MC, point blank, period. I agree. But Dre has had a lot of artists. But listen, 50 listen, Cent, let's, let's, Snoop Dogg, let's, let's, Kendrick Lamar, let's, let's, Ice Cube, look, 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 on let's, and let's, on. Let's f*** dreams. Eminem sold 16 million hard copies worldwide. He's the biggest artist worldwide, bro. Hands down. Over 220 million albums sold. Grammy Awards, an Emmy, an Oscar, making him the best-selling hip-hop artist ever. Let me repeat that. The best-selling hip-hop artist ever. And the crazy part about it is he doesn't even really care about that. I think I care about it more than he does. What's most important to him is that he's earned the respect of his peers as one of the best to ever do it. Point blank. Fans are now speculating that Usher might also be involved in this situation. Although Jones's lawsuit doesn't directly accuse Usher, it does reveal hints about Diddy's connections with other famous male artists. According to Jones, Diddy boasted about his past relationships with well-known male celebrities in the music world, dropping clues that seemed to point towards certain people. And I lived with Sean Puffy Combs for a year. That's the crazy thing. Now, that yeah. was L.A. Reid's idea, right? We're sending New you over York to City. something called Puffy Flavor Camp. There you go. To learn <laughs> some... Flavor Camp! Yeah, Flavor that's camp. what it was called. And you're going to go to Puff Daddy's. He's gonna In the 90s, do you understand what that's like? Puffy's place was like just filled with chicks and orging like nonstop, right? No, not really. I Come mean, on. But, did I, hey, it was curious. I got a chance to see some things. In describing one person, Diddy allegedly mentioned that this artist had recently performed at the Super Bowl and had a popular Las Vegas residency. While multiple artists performed at the Super Bowl, only Usher had just wrapped up a successful Las Vegas residency, as highlighted by Rolling Stone. Usher also recently had an emotional performance where he sang without you and thanked his audience, leading fans to believe he was the one Jones was hinting at. Didn't come along. I didn't say that. Okay. I, I didn't but say that. Didn't. <laughs> what I did say is that there were very curious things taking place, uh -huh. and I didn't necessarily understand it. Uh -huh. Biggie Smalls was Biggie there. Biggie Smalls was there. Lil' Kim. Craig Mack. All know, these people all are hanging these, around. All, yeah, man. Faith Evans, Jodeci, Mary okay? J. Blige. They ain't know nothing about this shit. Rumors of a romantic connection between Diddy and Usher have been swirling for years. In an old video, Diddy once mentioned waking up in the same bed as Usher, quickly adding, no homo, and even joked about them wrestling over frosted flakes. Considering these past comments and Diddy's supposed recordings, fans believe he may have private footage of Usher from their time together. That's my brother right here from day one. We used to wake up and, I mean, damn, pause, but like, that's how... I mean, I mean, back in the days when he was like 10 and I was a little bit older, his older brother, we used to fight over the over the frosted flakes, you know what I'm saying, before pause was invented. But wait, there's even more. The feds are saying that Cuba Gooding Jr. was also having a good time at Diddy's parties. And honestly, that's not surprising at all. And then his hands all on his leg and everything. It, 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 it was crazy, bro. I, I, I don't even believe that. So when you see Cuban Gooding fighting a case here in New York when he said the girl was saying that he was groping her and everything like that. I'm glad they didn't show that picture at his trial. Lil Rod hinted at this in his lawsuit, claiming that Cuba wasn't just a casual guest. He was actively enjoying himself. According to Rod, Diddy introduced him to Cuba on Diddy's yacht, where Cuba allegedly began making inappropriate advances, touching and groping him. You know, Diddy, he will put his hands on him, but you know, when he will put his hands on him, he would disguise it as horseplay but he felt like Diddy was trying to groom him, in a sense. Well, with the horse play situation, I used to see him do that with certain women. You understand? Uh, when he was mad, upset, or, or 
he he was too old for this, shit, but he would do that play fighting. Shit. You understand? So I can imagine him play fighting with Lil Rod. Rod even shared a photo showing Cuba getting a bit too close, raising eyebrows. It's like they say, birds of a feather flock together. And these two seem to be on the same wavelength. He would fight you. You understand? So I could see with a person like Lil Rod, he probably was roughing them up, grabbing them, groping them. You know what I'm saying? Acting like he playing with them, but he actually want him to do what he want him to do. Even before Diddy's drama came to light, Cuba was already dealing with accusations of inappropriate behavior towards women. In 2014, his wife of 20 years, Sarah, filed for legal separation. She didn't give details, but rumors suggested that she had finally had enough of Cuba's alleged infidelity. Some even speculated that she discovered he'd been essaying other women. After Sarah left, Cuba's behavior only seemed to get worse. Over 30 women have since come forward with allegations, claiming he acted inappropriately toward them. It feels like a Diddy 2.0 situation with layers of allegations that are overwhelming to unpack. One woman shared her experience recalling an incident on March 1st when Cuba came into a bar around midnight and began bothering several women who wanted photos with him. He would grab their cheeks, and if they reacted negatively, he'd either touch their breasts or say he loved them. There's even a video showing him touching a woman without her consent. The Oscar-winning actor Cuba Gooding Jr. facing new charges of misconduct and now surveillance surfacing. Here's ABC's Gio Benitez. Tonight, Cuba Gooding Jr. pleading not guilty to new charges after this video obtained by TMZ surfaced. In it, you can see the actor appearing to grope a woman in a New York City restaurant. Gooding also pleading not guilty two weeks ago to charges from another allegation in 2018. Another woman came forward, alleging that Cuba essayed her in 2013. She met him at a hotel in Soho, where he invited her for drinks, then suggested she join him in his room to change clothes. Once inside, she claimed he essayed her. Cuba was arrested for this in 2019, and his arrest video made headlines. There is Cuba's legal issues didn't end there. He settled another case in Manhattan, pleading guilty to harassment after allegedly kissing a woman without her consent. In a separate case, a woman named Natasha Ashworth accused him of battery, essay, and emotional distress, leading to a judgment ordering him to pay $80,000 in damages in early 2020. To avoid prison time for the Soho incident, he took a plea deal, admitting to a lesser charge. Cuba's lawyer tried to justify his actions, describing him as outgoing and friendly, and suggesting that while he might be a bit frisky, he's not inappropriate. Yeah, I believe his claims. If somebody put something in Cuban Gooding Jr. ear that this was fresh meat, or see, can you break him, or see, can you do something? Because don't no other man be that close to no other man, man, for, the, for that reason. Come on, bro. That's crazy. The lawyer claimed that Cuba has always respected women, noting, I've known him for over 30 years and he's never been charged or convicted of a crime. I don't see this affecting his case or creating a problem. Moving on to Mary J. Blige. It's no surprise she's allegedly been seen at Diddy's infamous freak-offs, given her close history with him. You all know, these people all are hanging these, around. All, yeah, man, Faith Evans, Jodeci, Mary okay? J. Blige, they ain't know nothing about this shit. Oh. <laughs> I was having a good time, you know what I mean? If you thought Diddy's friendship with Jay-Z was strong, his bond with Mary goes even deeper. They go back to the early 90s, collaborating on her debut album, What's the 411. Diddy has consistently praised her, once calling her the greatest storyteller in R&B history. He admired her for paving the way for women to speak their truth and hailed her as the queen of hip hop soul. J. Blige is being talked about a lot. She got her start with Diddy. And then I think there's some quotes where she talks about how she saw the devil. And obviously we all know that she's sober now, but she went through some really low time. But Diddy and Mary's relationship hit a rough patch in the late 90s and early 2000s. They had a long messy feud that lasted years and it seemed like they might never reconcile. Eventually, Mary took responsibility, admitting that her own struggles and lack of business knowledge were partly to blame. She explained that during that time, she was in a bad place and understood why Diddy, focused on his own label, might have distanced himself. After some time, they were able to mend their friendship until Diddy's recent legal troubles arose. Mary made it clear she had moved on, posting a bold message on Instagram that read, I burn bridges as needed. 
This came as no surprise to some, especially with Diddy facing serious RICO charges. Rumors have circulated for years about Mary's experiences with Diddy, with some alleging he was physically harsh. Some say he pressured her into using certain intimate items against her will, which left her deeply upset. There are also claims that he got her pregnant, but pushed her to end it, an experience believed to have impacted her decision not to have children. Despite these issues, Mary stayed close to Diddy for a long time, but eventually something changed. Meek Mill suggested her distance may have stemmed from her involvement in questionable activities with younger guys at Diddy's parties. Mary's past includes a relationship with singer Danny Boy when he was 16 and she was 24. Danny recently shared that their first encounter happened after the 1995 Source Awards. At a party, someone told him a woman wanted to meet him. When he entered the room, he found himself alone with Mary and Diddy's baby mama, Misa Hilton. After I left for a little while, we was talking, I think I left out and she'll call me back up to the room. He said, come back, come back upstairs, man, or old girl wanna want to see you. This old girl. And uh, Mary's sitting on the couch. So I know the girl that you in the bed with no woman. So I went in, I'm, he closed the door and shit, and I sit down and I start talking to Mary, in the inside, I'm about to lose it, because I'm actually sitting here talking to Mary. She's sitting on the couch and shit, and we ordered some food and some more drinks. Danny Boy opened up about how Mary J. Blige was very flirtatious with him, even getting quite touchy. He said she went as far as resting her head in his lap, and things escalated quickly. They became intimate, but it didn't end there. 15, 16 years old, and she laying on the couch, and I'm sitting on the other end, and she lay down on the couch and put her head in my lap. I'm like, damn. He can't be talking about Mary. He's talking about she wanted me to come back up there and see on my lap. According to Danny, this turned into a full-blown affair, with Mary flying him out to New York for their secret meetups. He believed he was her boyfriend, though she was also reportedly involved with Tupac at the time. From that time, I had an opportunity to go out to New York and visit her a couple more times. But you know, that's why I was kind of confused when I heard Kurt saying that Mary was pot girl. Uh, Cause at that time she was my girl. <laughs> at that time, I'm 15, 16 years old and she. People say Mary was known for having a great time at Diddy's parties. But as soon as word spread that the feds were investigating Diddy and might uncover more about those events, she was quick to pull away. Another name that keeps surfacing is Oprah Winfrey. And the internet isn't exactly shocked. Oprah has a complex reputation, and it's notable that the feds would bring her up, given her history of addressing anyone who challenges her. Before Diddy's issues came to light, Oprah faced criticism over her association with a Brazilian man named John of God, a self-proclaimed healer. She was a major supporter, featuring him on her show multiple times and praising him as the real deal, appearing to wholeheartedly endorse his practices. They didn't use the word They implied that something inappropriate was going on. Hearing that, John Samuel, uh, immediately after hearing that allegation, removed the accused, Tiny Makopo, from the campus. I was, needless to say, devastated and, and really shaken to my core when I first heard this news. And uh, immediately within the first hour of receiving this information. With everything unfolding around Diddy, people are starting to re-examine Oprah's connection to John of God, questioning what really happened. Things took a dark turn when it came out that John of God was involved in terrible acts, including keeping women chained up, forcing them into pregnancy, and allegedly selling their babies or organs. Authorities found out about it, and the employee was charged with 13 counts of getting inappropriate with kids. Turns out at least six girls aged 13 to 15 were allegedly systematically and ritualistically targeted. Oprah went on record saying she was going to look at the situation, but after her investigation, the employee was cleared of any wrongdoing, and some allege Oprah had a hand in trying to cover it up. But these incidents continue to rock the school, including a newborn baby being found unalived at the school, which some say was for When these horrifying details emerged, Oprah quickly cut ties, scrubbing all the videos, and pretending they'd never had a connection. And then there's her association with Harvey Weinstein, another figure with a troubling history. It makes you wonder why she seems drawn to these problematic men. And I think people question, why would Oprah, of all people, do that? Well, first of all, I just want to say that 
Um, I have lived Me Too yeah. since I was nine years old mm -hmm. and was raped at nine from nine to 14 and then raped again at 14. And nothing is harder than standing up for yourself when you're 14 and not being believed. Another celebrity allegedly involved in Diddy's parties is Chris Brown. It wasn't too surprising to see Rodney's lawsuit hint at the Look At Me Now singer, given his frequent attendance at Diddy's events. Rodney's lawsuit claims to have strong evidence of a major R&B star engaging with young women and adult workers at these parties. Though the name wasn't directly mentioned, the clues pointed towards someone specific, a Grammy-winning R&B artist with legal troubles involving a billionaire from Barbados. Considering Rihanna's billionaire status and her turbulent past with Chris Brown, it seemed likely that Rodney Jones was referring to him. Chris Brown's an amazing and talented musician, but let's call a thing a thing. He's a of women. R&B superstar Chris Brown is the latest celebrity to now come under focus in the Sean Combs story. Due to a new explosive documentary, older allegations about Brown a woman at a Combs party are being viewed in a very different light. One name on the rumored list that stirred up the drama between Diddy and 50 Cent is Daphne Joy. According to Rodney Jones's lawsuit, Daphne was allegedly on Diddy's payroll as an adult worker, a claim she strongly denied on Instagram. Daphne shared her anger, calling the allegations lies, and saying she was considering legal action against both Rodney and his lawyer. I am deeply hurt by the lies in Rodney Jones's lawsuit, she wrote, calling the claim that she was an adult worker 100% false and a form of character assassination. 50 Cent is reacting to his ex-girlfriend and baby mama Daphne Joy being named in the Diddy lawsuit. In case you're unaware, Daphne was named as one of Diddy's workers. And by worker, I mean a a very specific type of worker that I cannot state on this app because this video will get taken down. I'm sure you can do the math. In response, 50 posted this picture of himself smoking a cigar. In the caption, he says, I didn't know you was a blank worker, you little blank worker, lol. Yo, this is a movie. 50 also shared a screenshot of a news report from Fox that you can pause to read, detailing alleged activity that was going on during Diddy's freak off parties. In the caption, 50 he says, shaking my head, this is gonna be so good. What do you wanna bet that I'm gonna get these tapes? I'll pay top dollar for them. You've been over there, I don't go to puffy parties. It's no secret, 50 Cent has been waiting for the downfall of Diddy. The lawsuit sparked a social media feud between Daphne and her ex, 50 Cent. The rapper made several digs at Daphne online, leading her to respond by accusing him of physical mistreatment during their relationship. Their public clash reminded fans of their rocky past, including the birth of their son, Sire, in 20. 2011 and their breakup in 2012, which was surrounded by allegations against 50 Cent. While it's unclear if or when Daphne might have worked for Diddy, some speculate that he may have compromising footage of her from his so-called freak-off recordings. Daphne isn't the only woman the lawsuit accused of being closely involved with Diddy, adding more fuel to the ongoing speculation. Another name mentioned in Rodney's lawsuit is Young Miami, who was allegedly paid a monthly stipend of $250,000 to work for Diddy and act as a courier, reportedly bringing pink coke to his parties. Rodney claimed she delivered this by private jet to Diddy at the 2023 Feral Something in the Water Festival. Young Miami addressed these allegations on Instagram, saying the $250,000 figure was made up. People don't even pay that much for child support, she replied. She and Diddy dated for around two years before before ending things, and given Diddy's history of recording, many wouldn't be shocked if footage exists of their time together. Another surprising name on the list is Pastor T.D. Jakes. The pastor from Potter's House was previously linked to Diddy, and in 2022, a video of him at Diddy's 53rd birthday party in Los Angeles raised eyebrows among his Christian followers. Many wondered why he attended, considering Diddy's reputation for wild parties, and debated whether it was appropriate for a pastor to be seen at such an event. A spokesperson for Jake's explained that the bishop's appearance at Diddy's party was brief, as he was in L.A. for business meetings. They stated, Bishop Jake's was in L.A. for important business, and a quick appearance at the former Revolt chairman's birthday seemed respectful, especially since Bishop Jake's sermons air on the Revolt network. 
Rumors began swirling, though, that Diddy may have recorded Jake's at the event and might be using the footage as leverage. These speculations surfaced after a blog hinted at Jake's possible involvement in Diddy's parties, even suggesting he might be gay. Additionally, online sources claim that Cassie's lawsuit against Diddy includes a USB with recordings from his alleged adult gatherings, possibly featuring high-profile guests like Jake's. But wait, there's more! Rick Ross also got mentioned in the Fed's investigation. A man who claimed to be one of Diddy's party associates told the police he believed Rick Ross and Diddy were in a romantic relationship. If Rick Ross watching this nigga, let me tell you something. Stop hiring drivers. Drivers always tell on you, nigga. Things that I've seen that he does on camera, kissing the back of man's neck and saying certain things, Rick Ross, mm. It's pretty surprising to see Rick Ross pop up in this situation, especially since he's tried to keep his connection to Diddy under wraps. Usually when people talk about Diddy's behavior, Rick isn't brought up, but that doesn't mean the rumors aren't out there. His baby mama, Tia Kemp, has been trying to expose his alleged ties to Diddy for a while now. But not many people took her seriously. She has a reputation for airing Rick's dirty laundry on social media, which makes people skeptical of her claims. Like the slippery soap. Yo, I actually washed the car because I'm supporting my brother. I'm not just buying slippery soap. I'm actually using it myself. So, yo, just just stay tuned to see Diddy and Rose wash the car. You never and know Diddy, we, and we, Diddy we, got on Carisha roof of the truck. <laughs> He made it happen. I'm proud of you. Only for slippery soap. Just a few weeks ago, Tia made a bold claim saying that Rick and Diddy were getting intimate right out in the open. Tia has been publicly challenging Rick for years, so it's no surprise she'd speak up again. But now her claims might carry more weight since one of Diddy's alleged victims has reportedly backed up her story. Plus, the feds have noted that Rick Ross was allegedly a regular at Diddy's parties. But what do you think about all this? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. That's all for today. We hope you enjoyed that video. And if you did, make sure to hit like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more videos like this.